what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. My name's Leslie. It is the weekend wrap-up. If you're new here, the weekend wrap-up is just where I take bits and clips of our weekend, add it all into one video, and just summarize our weekend. And then we end up on the couch where Bryant gives a summary of his Sunday morning sermon. Today is actually Saturday. I am not completely ready. As you can see, I don't have my mascara on yet. But um, it's Saturday morning. It's after well after 10 o'clock. I have no idea what time it is. Um, but Brian has just called, interrupted my getting ready and, um, needs us, needs me and Isaac to go look at something. Brian has gone to the church to work on putting a second oven in yay, uh, at the fellowship hall. And so now we are going to, um, but he needs us to go look at something. He needed something he saw on marketplace came up. And he's not getting a chance to go look at it because he's at the church. So he's asked Isaac and I to go check it out. So Isaac is outside taking the truck and hooking up a trailer in case we bring it home. And I'm waiting for Bryant to get here to give me the money in case we bring it home. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to take you guys with us. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're going to look at once we get out into the truck. Speaking of trucks, I know you can probably see that this is not our normal truck. Bryant is always, during hay season, we always run two trucks going all the time. And, um, um, because we're moving hay out of fields, and then we have one at the chicken house. Isaac has a green truck, but his truck is on its last leg. And he's actually wanting to sell it while it still has some value at all and um, get him something else. So we needed a second truck. So Bryant found this one. It is only one year newer than his gray Sanford and Son truck that we call it because he hauls everything in it. The back seat's full. The back is full. But we got him um, this and... Um, He's super excited. So Isaac is going up to hook up to the trailer and we are fixing <laughs> to head out. I came in cause it was cold and the wind was blowing and my hair did crazy stuff. So there's the truck. We have a second farm truck now, which is what we needed. We needed a second farm truck because Bryant may be going one direction and da he needs Daniel to go a different direction. So now we have two trucks that can be doing multiple things. Like if we're taking cows to the sale, one person can stay here and do work here. It's just gonna be very beneficial. And Bryant, let me tell you, he's been looking for months, probably years for a second farm truck. In fact, I know it's been years for a second farm truck. Um, and so he found a deal and it just, it was such a good deal, he couldn't pass it up. So, all right, now let's, um, wait for Bryant and instructions on what we're going to look at. I'll tell you about that in the truck. Okay, so what we're going to look at is a four-wheeler. And a farm always needs a four-wheeler, especially when you have cows and uh, you have snow or mud and so forth. So, we are going to look at a four-wheeler. We have two four-wheelers. Neither one are in operation at the moment. <laughs> So, and we're expecting bad weather next week. And so 
I don't know how involved fixing the two we have are, but we're just going to look at this. This is another deal he came across. That's one that's almost too good to pass up unless he gave me strict orders if there's any blue smoke or if it skips not to buy it. So we're gonna go see. I'm gonna get Isaac to crank it. I'm gonna look for blue smoke and listen for skips. And if everything's good and I like it and I feel good about it, then we're coming home with it. So I'm back home folding laundry. The four-wheeler was a no-go. I just did not feel comfortable enough making the decision because there was it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't terrible. And it was in that in-between stage that I didn't want to make the decision. So um, anyway, so Brian is either A, going to go back and look at it, or B, just scratch it all together. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't film with you guys and show you the four-wheeler because I was actually having Bryant on, um, I had him on video, video and Isaac riding it and everything so he could see. Anyway, all right, so either A, Bryant's going to go by and look at it and make the decision himself or B, we'll scratch it all together. So, all right, so we're going to go to my favorite place, Sam's and Costco. And we have another grocery store to go to, so whenever Bryant gets home, that's where we're headed. Okay, I've got some Lady Fingers here, cookies, Lady Finger cookies, and a Radicchio cabbage. Tell them what you're gonna be making. We're gonna make tiramisu, and then the Radicchio is gonna go in an Italian salad. We're doing an Italian-themed meal. And here we are, back at our <laughs> number one shopping place, Sam's Club. How much? Eleven ninety-eight. Tell them why you're looking at that. Well, we've got a fundraiser coming up for the young man that just passed away with cancer. We're going to continue on with the fundraiser for his wife. Some of you might know this, some of you might not. But in the United States of America, if your spouse dies before you are 60 years old, you can't draw any widow benefit widow or widower's benefits until you turn 60. And this young lady's 59, so we're gonna go ahead and do the fundraiser to help her through this last year. And so we're getting ready to buy, not today, but we're getting ready to buy. We're a, pricing everything today. Yeah, we, we're gonna need about 34 cans of these in about, in about three or four weeks. Canned chicken. Okay, everybody, we've got bunches of stuff. A big old five pound bag of mozzarella cheese, some bacon bits. Check this out. That's a bunch of garlic. <laughs> it's gonna help my bread. <laughs> Keep the vampires away. A real wedge of Parmesan cheese, some canned chicken, coffee, mushrooms, rotisserie chicken. You can't come to Sam's or Costco and not get a rotisserie chicken. I mean, that's just a sin. Spaghetti, cheese, heavy cream plates. We are set. What's on the menu for this week? It's going to be an Italian week. We're doing Italian all week long. We're making biscotti, um, tetris chicken tetrazzini. We're making tiramisu, a big Italian salad. It's going to be delicious. So if you couldn't tell from this video already, I am thoroughly enjoying doing these um, themed meals. Like at, th at um, New Year's, we did Chinese. For Isaac's birthday, we did a Louisiana Cajun type meal. And so now I'm working on an Italian meal. It's gonna be a week of recipes, but it's, we're gonna end up at the Friday night where we have our meal together. So each night we'll have a recipe, but we'll, end it with the big festivity of the meal. So um, if you haven't picked up on it, it's gonna be Italian. So I'm so excited. So all right, let's go. Let's go to Costco and get, see if they've got anything that I didn't get at Sam's. What'd you find? A deal on these LED uh, fixtures. Light fixtures. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what, what, it, what uh, if you choose daylight or what you choose, they're 5K to 3K. 
And guys, they're only nineteen ninety nine. Yep, that's a great deal. Great deal. The reason I don't like coming to Costco is because she goes down every single aisle looking at every single thing. What you looking at, sweetie? I'm just looking at all this fancy stuff that I don't ever get to look at. Told you. Every aisle. Okay, everyone. Caroline got me these nice salt and pepper grinders that light up and they're battery operated. And so I needed some rock salt because uh, I can't find my Redmond Real Salt rock salt. Um, so I just picked this up. It was about $5, I think, here. And so super happy with that this is a four pack of bacon not sure do you remember how much the bacon was it was $14 and you get four packs so that was great uh, we also got some black peppercorns to go in my grinders now this is a little bit of a um, splurge it's these chocolate French crepes we're gonna try those out and I figured that might be a fun little snack for the boys we'll see and Bryant loves Kalamata olives, so we got him a jar. All right, so that looks like about all we're going to get here today at Costco. So now it's on to our favorite restaurant that we have a gift card for, and we will see you guys there. Guys, we are here on January the 13th, which is well after Christmas, but the lines are worse here today than anything I ever saw at Christmas time. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I've missed the memo and I just showed up here today, but uh, so did everybody else. But Bryant's in line, I'm gonna catch up with him. And um, then we will head over to Texas Roadhouse. You knew where it was, I know. So we'll see you in just a minute. Here we are heading out. Let me show you the line, look. It wasn't this bad at Christmas. Yeah, it wasn't this bad at Christmas. You know why it's bad? Tell them why it's bad. I don't know why it's bad. Why is it, because why they, is it bad? Because people think it's going to snow. Oh, that's true. They are calling Ch for snow next Tuesday, week. Tuesday, next Didn't Tuesday. Didn't even cross my mind. That's what the deal is. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Couch Time. Good afternoon, everybody. I forgot to take them with us when we went to Texas Roadhouse. You did? But I couldn't have filmed anyway because it was music blaring and music in the background. Yep. So <clears throat> we had a great waitress. Her name was Stephanie. Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. She, she did subscribed. a phenomenal job. Yep. She did a great job. Her husband races late model. Uh, no, it wasn't late model. Was it modified or late model? I don't know. I think it was late model. She races late model at Caraway, little racetrack here close to us. Had a great steak. Everything went good. Yep. We enjoyed our fellowship, Liz and myself. The first date night we've kind of had in a, in a long time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because we've been eating out with everybody else. Yeah. But anyway, today was a great day. This week's been a great week. A lot of good things coming together. Um, tell them what you're doing next week. What you're cooking next week. Next week is <clears throat> all based on like Italian items. So we're going to be making uh, biscotti. We're going to make focaccia. We're going to make chicken tetrazzini. We're going to, it's the whole week is Italian. And then probably next Sunday, will share the full meal when we actually eat the full meal with you guys so wow that's going to be great she's liking these themed themes yeah. these themed meals i love it she likes it that way it helps her plan and I, ahead and i'm learning new things yeah she feels italian this week yeah yeah where i was cajun last week yeah, yeah. <laughs> The raging Cajun. Hey, y'all, that jambalaya that we did for Isaac's birthday and the red beans and rice and the beignets, that, <coughs> that was amazing. And I heard a lot of my friends, you guys from uh, <coughs> choking myself. It choked her up. It was so good. <laughs> who live in Louisiana told me I nailed it. So thank you guys so very much. So I had a great week. Hey, recap the sermon real quick for those of you that didn't get to watch it. If you want to catch it on the replay, go over to Browers Wesleyan on our Facebook page and you can grab the sermon there. It went really good. Uh, I talked about today in Isaiah chapter six, where Isaiah says uh, uh, in the year of King Uzziah, and he talks about an encounter he had with God and he describes the encounter as this. He said, woe unto me, a man of unclean lips, woe unto the people that I hang around of unclean lips. And, um, Basically, what he said there was, he says, you know, when King Uzziah died, 
there was a need for someone else to step up. And this is Isaiah being called as a prophet. And we talked about today, he says, God ruin my life is what he says in the scripture. Um, ruin basically means this, for God to dismantle our selfish ambitions, our selfish desires, and to rebuild us into his character and his nature. And what he was saying was for him to be the prophet that God would have him to be, God had to dismantle him and rebuild him so that he could be what he needed to be. So today we talked about what it meant to have your life ruined for God. And notice it was too in, in the presence of God's holiness yeah. that he recognized his need. His need. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was simply this was we've got to acknowledge our sins and our shortcomings. Um, he says, woe, me, uh, woe, woe am I a man of unclean lips. He recognized that his mouth was a problem. I don't know if he had a potty mouth, if he was a liar or a gossip or told a lot of untruths. I don't know, but he said, woe unto me if it was prideful talk. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. My mouth does not glorify God. And he recognized that, as Leslie said, in the presence of God. It was through the presence of God that it revealed his uncleanliness and his sinfulness. Um, and the second thing was this. He had to have a heart broken for God and a heart broken for the things that God's heart is broken for. Um, he had to recognize that his call that was on his life to be the prophet was going to take him out of his comfort mm -hmm. zone and to stretch him into the next level. And some of us need to be stretched because as Christians, we can become complacent, um, meaning we're okay with the status quo. Uh, don't ask me to do this. Don't ask me to serve here. Don't ask me to serve there. I'll do this, <laughs> this, and this, but not anything above that. Yeah. We'll check off the mandatory boxes of being a believer and the mandatory boxes of just attending a church. But God, don't ask me to do any more of that. And then lastly, we talked about simply this. For our hearts, for our lives to be ruined for God, it simply starts with repentance. David said, create a clean heart in me, O God, a pure heart. Uh, do not cast your steadfast spirit from me. Create in me a steadfast spirit. And that's what David was talking about. Uh, we talked about real, true repentance, a true turning, a turning back to God, turning away from that sinful life. And then God asked the question in Isaiah's presence, whom shall I sin? And after Isaiah wanted his life wrecked and wanted his life ruined, it was only then that he was qualified to do what God would have him to do. And I pray that you would allow yourself to get qualified for what God has for you in the year 2024. This year has the potential to be your best year ever. If you simply do what I said today and share in this, acknowledge your shortcomings and your sin. Allow God to break your heart for the things that breaks his and repent and become what he would have you to be. Let God wreck your life and ruin your life so it can be reestablished in him. When God asked the question, whom shall I send or who, who will go? Isaiah, with his hands raised, says, choose me. Hear yeah. my Lord, send me. And I hope that's your prayer today, that you're ready to do whatever it is God is equipping you and calling you to do. I'm not saying he's calling you to the pastorate. I'm not saying he's calling you to be a Sunday school teacher. But tomorrow, you're going to get a chance to be his witness. You're going to get a chance to be the light. You're going to get a chance to be the salt. Get ready. God is sending you somewhere. And when you think of this scripture, don't think of the word ruin in a negative, a negative yeah. context. Think of it as God is changing me into his likeness. Birthing something new. Yes. Something, it's, it's, we die daily. I think you brought that out in the first sermon that we die daily and that's the kind of ruin we want we want to we want to die so that he can live and shine through us less of me more of more him. of him all right that's the sermon in a nutshell all right guys we will see you tomorrow as we kick off this italian week i'm so excited and we'll talk more about it on monday's video all right thanks for joining us thanks for going with us shopping and we'll see you next time right here on The Farm and Pastor's Wife. Don't forget to like, share, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. And we've told you this many times, but the greatest thing you can do to support our channel is to share our videos on your social media, send them to your friends, whatever you need to do. Very quickly, we've had some viewers say, hey, I hadn't been seeing you in a while. I went back and looked and somehow my bell notifications have gotten changed. 
be sure to hit the bell and to choose all, all. so you get notified every time every time a new video goes no up. No matter what kind of video we do, you'll get notified. Check check that about once a month. Make sure something yep. hadn't changed. Go, and go not, hit it again. Not just her channel. No, you got all gotta, the ones you subscribe to. Got to hit it and choose all. Yes. Yeah. Check all yep. your channels because somehow. You get knocked out of that that, that algorithm I don't or know whatever. Why, but double check all your subscriptions. Yep. All right, and interact. That's what I think keeps you on the getting their stuff is if you interact and you leave comments and so forth. So, all right, guys, we will see you next time. Remember, the grease is hot enough. You, you can, can fry, fry anything. anything. Bye, y'all.